Hello everyone and thank you for being here. My name is Mahbube and I'm working on electrospinning in the lab since 2005 that I started my master thesis. Today I will share with you some of the really important practical tips and tricks that you need to know before starting um, to work with electrospinning and I hope you will enjoy it. So the main goal when you use electrospinning is to make nanofibers and to make these nanofibers you need to know about uh, the idea of electrospinning to know what is exactly electrospinning and what are the important parameters that are involved in electrospinning process this information you can get easily from the literature but of course to be able to work in the lab and working with electrospinning setup you need to have some practical approach to know what to do exactly and what are the key parameters that you need to take into account before making your electrospinning solution. And I will show you about these practical approaches and also some strategies about how to make nanofibers. By now, everyone knows that electrospinning involves in uh, making a nice solution and using a high voltage and having a collector to collect these fibers. In fact, you have a high voltage power supply. You have a polymer that can maintain a constant flow rate of solution by using a syringe pump. And also you have a conductive needle that um, works as a source of uh, to inject the polymer and also you have a conductive collector that uh, is very important to collect these fibers that hopefully you will be able to produce it uh, by listening to this um, practical approach that I will show you. As everyone knows, we have some uh, independent parameters and some dependent parameters in electrospinning process. Independent parameters, they can be adjusted and they can be controlled. For example, the concentration of the polymer that you use, the distance between uh, two electrodes, the needle and collector, relative humidity and etc. And the dependent parameters are the parameters that you cannot control them directly and they depend on independent parameters and usually they are very tricky to work with. To optimize material properties, fiber diameter and to know how homogeneous is your solution, how is the density of your fibrous web, how, uh, how is the fibers distribution and etc. You need to have a compromise between uh, your uh, polymer solution, the solvent that you choose, what is the concentration that you have, what is the electrospinning distance, how about voltage and feed rate. And to know that you need to have some uh, practical experience in the lab to be able to make this balance, this compromise between various parameters. When you start working with electrospinning, first of all, you need to choose the right material. I would like to emphasize this part very much because if you choose the wrong solution, if you choose the wrong polymer, if you choose, uh, if you choose the wrong solvent or other additive, you will never have any kind of fibers. And later you have to think about what kind of fibrous morphology you want to have. You want to have solid fibers, you, have, you want to have hollow fibers, core shell fibers, what kind of fibers you want to make to, um, uh, to fabricate. And also you need to think about uh, the construct, this web um, morphology that you will have at the end for the pr 
for the specific application. You want to produce a 2D uh, non-woven network like a normal one, or you have you want to have some special 3D structure that it depends on your application. So this one also you need to spend some time uh, to customize your electrospinning setup. And of course, another very important aspect is that you can combine your electrospinning setup with other methods. In these other methods, they can be uh, used as a pre-treatment method, so to improve the quality of your solution, or as a post-treatment method to improve the performance of the fibers for a specific application that you have in, my, uh, in, in your mind. So you have to consider these four aspects in the lab or even before going to lab to be able to fabricate fibers. As everyone knows, the key parameters in electrospinning are divided to three categories. One is solution properties, the second one is electrospinning process parameters, and the other one is the ambient uh, properties. I would say that these, uh, the importance of each of these three groups depend on the polymer and the application that you have. But mostly for the polymers that I was working with them for either energy storage application or biomedical application, the solution parameters are very, very, very important. What is the molecular weight that you have? You usually have to use a high, high molecular weight for electrospinning to make a smooth fibers. This, I, this you can have um, a check in the literature to see what kind of molecular weight they were using for your specific polymer. And the most important one, what is the concentration to have to provide the electrospinability to have uniform fibers and to have bead free fibers. This concentra concentration, you also can check the literature to have an idea about it. But of course, the values that you get in the literature will be different from the one that you work in the lab. The values that you collect from the literature, it's just an estimation. And then you have to play, uh, I would say, up to 2 to 5% different concentration than the one that you find in the literature, because it depends on many things. It depends on the electrospinning setup that you use in the lab. It depends even on the person who prepares the solution or on the ambient temperature. And the other very, very important aspect is what kind of solvent you are using. You need to use a solvent that has suitable conductivity. It, it is enough volatile, it is miscible for your electrospinability, and it is compatible with your polymer and other additive that you use in your polymeric system. And also it may provide a smaller and uniform fibers. So be aware of these three important aspects when you choose your, uh, when you decide about your solution um, properties. The other important aspect is that process parameter. But I would say that if you don't have a nice solution, even if you play with everything of the electrospinning process parameters, you will never get fibers. And usually you will get only nanoparticles. So put all of your energy to make a nice solution, nice and electrospinability um, would increase when you have a nice solution. And later uh, start working to change the process parameters. The applied voltage that are usually used for different polymers in the lab is between 10 to 20 kilovolt. And the feed rate, it uh, depends on uh, your um, needle size and it depends on the solution viscosity that you have. But you can get an idea about it from the literature and uh, then you can play with the feed rate and you can check that uh, what kind of fibers you will have and how is your production rate. Uh, because if you have a very low feed rate, you have to do it uh, for a few days to collect enough thick material. And the electrospinning distance is also important. Usually it's from 10 to 15 centimeter. Um, for simple polymers like PAN, it doesn't matter almost any kind of distance that you put, you will get some fibers, but, but some polymers, especially biopolymers, they are very sensitive to the distance and you need to think about it. 
before going to lab. And also some polymers, they are very sensitive to the temperature and mainly to the relative humidity. I would say that many labs, um, they use homemade uh, electrospinning setup or they use very simple electrospinning setup that um, it doesn't have a controlled environment. So I would suggest that you always write down the relative humidity that you collect nice fibers with that. Because I observe that sometimes in um, relative humidity for some polymers is very important and sometimes in summer for example you can collect fibers in winter you cannot so it's very important to make a record to write down the temperature and re relative humidity that you have in the lab when you do the electrospinning here is the electrospinning flowchart what are the steps that they are involved in the application of electrospinning for your specific application? First of all, choose the right polymer, choose the right sol solvent and make a nice solution. I would suggest that mainly use a magnet, uh, magnetic steerer to avoid any kind of problem. I don't suggest using ultrasonic uh, baths. Um, but rather than magnetic steerer because it provides a better and more homogeneous solution. If you don't have a homogeneous solution in this step, for sure there is a problem either with your polymer or solvent and you have to change it or you have to kind of um, use additive or a kind of pre-treatment. For example, you increase the temperature a little bit or you do other methods to improve this um, solution viscosity and the homogeneous to have a homogeneous solution. And you have to focus on this part a lot because as I said earlier, when you don't have a nice solution, you can never get fibers. So be focused on this step. And if you have a nice solution, then you can perform the electrospinning. You can uh, play with the process parameters to have bead free fibers. And if your fibers are not soluble, you have to start from the beginning to the repeat it a few times till you get bead free fibers uh, and nice fibers for your specific application. If you have nice fibers, then depending on your application, you can um, employ some post treatment uh, for your fibers. This post treatment, this can be a stabilization of your fibers, this can be some um, Mm, plasma treatment of your fibers, some calcination of the fibers. It depends on the application that you have to play with this post-treatment process. So um, uh, electrospinning nowadays, you don't focus just to make fibers. You also focus how to combine the other new method with this electrospinning technique. Um, if you ask me that what is your proposed electrospinning package for my application, I would say that focus on these four groups. Make a compromise between these four groups and you are always successful to use electrospinning for your application. First of all, as you are here, it means you are interested to make uh, to use electrospinning techniques. So use electrospinning to make your fibers. 2D or 3D um, and then combine some pre and post treatment that you already know from other chemistry or physic physics science to improve the performance of your fibers. And of course, you always have to think about uh, some, con you have to consider some balance, some consideration related to the material and application and optimize your fibers and also your mats, these non-woven that you collect, uh, depending on the application. If you consider these four items, you can be sure that you will have a nice electrospun fibers package for your application. Now you are ready to go to the lab and to fabricate your nanofibers, but I would like to know um, your experience in the lab so you can write me a comment if you observe something unusual or if you think that I have to add something uh, some new concern to this presentation thank you for your attention and I wish you enough luck to be able to make some nanofibers <laughs>